Hi, I'm Dr. Lilly and this is my pocket pediatrician. I've actually been working on putting this video together for months. I've been creating polls, doing online research, taking gun safety classes, and doing my best to put together a non-political video for you about gun safety in children. In the middle of all this, on November 7th, the NRA had a tweet that got thousands and thousands of responses. They said, someone should tell self-important anti-gun doctors to stay in their lane. Half of the articles in the Annals of Internal Medicine are pushing for gun control. Most upsetting, however, is that the medical community seems to have consulted no one but themselves. But even though I have no self-important agenda, that tweet made me so mad. When you tell those of us who have been covered in the blood and the tears of the victims of gun violence to stay in our lane, it just doesn't sit well with us. My lane is not just the pediatric ER, code rooms, and trauma bays where we fight to resuscitate the victims of gun violence. My lane is not just the family rooms where we allow families to process their grief. And my lane is not the bathrooms and supply closets where I have sobbed for the young lives that have been lost. After I went through college, medical school, residency, and fellowship, I then decided to get my master's in public health. This is partly because I truly hate being in the pediatric code room and trauma bays. You may think that I picked the wrong profession if I hate seeing children die. Maybe I did. It's heartbreaking no matter what the cause. I personally have reached the limit on the number of tragedies I can handle. But on a larger scale, I'm more interested in preventing those tragedies from happening in the first place. That's part of why I started this channel, My Pocket Pediatrician. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Whether you're pro-gun or anti-gun doesn't matter today. I don't care if you have a weaponry room in your home or you've never touched a gun in your entire life. It doesn't matter. Why? Because there are more guns than people in the United States. Whether you like it or not, the odds are that you or your child will encounter a gun at some point in your life. And we need to talk about the key points to keep your child safe. If you have a gun in your home, you need to watch this video. If you don't have a gun in your home, you still need to watch this video. Guns exist. Whether they're legal or not, they're not going anywhere. So it's time to face some of the hard truths and figure out what you need to do to keep your children safe. So today, we're not gonna talk about how you resuscitate a child who's been shot. I'm not here to discuss trauma protocols and blood transfusions and exploratory laparotomies. I'm not giving out information on support groups for loss and tragedy, all of which would be considered my lane. Instead, I wanna talk about how we can prevent children from getting shot in the first place. Some of what I say may surprise you, and my own children actually surprised me when I put them to the test. So stay tuned to find out what you need to know. This is my lane, and I've got a minivan full of kids if you want to go for a ride with me. When the doctor says my child has a condition, I'll learn more at my pocket, pediatrician. When you think about keeping kids safe from guns, it doesn't seem that hard. Some people think, well, we don't own a gun, so my kid's never going to encounter one. Other families might say, well, we've had our kids around guns since before they knew how to ride a bike, so they definitely know how to handle a weapon and they're going to be safe. Other families have told me, we talk about gun safety all the time. My kids have the Eddie the Eagle video memorized. There's no way they would have a problem with guns. All of these approaches are different and maybe there's some merit in each of them, but the truth is between the years 2006 and 2016, 22,724 kids between the ages of 1 and 18 were killed by guns. It's that red column up there. Obviously, motor vehicle crashes came in at number one, followed by firearms, then cancer, suffocation, congenital anomalies, and then drowning. In the year 2015 alone, there were over 13,000 injuries from guns, and over 2,800 of those children died. One of the obstacles I've had in making this video is that real hard scientific evidence is a little hard to come by when it comes to gun violence in children. I've spent a lot of time in the last few months chasing down statistics and trying to figure out where the data is. This is largely because in 1997, federal legislation was passed stating that none of the funds used for injury prevention and control at the CDC may be used to advocate for or promote gun control. In 2011, that law was also extended to the NIH or National Institute for Health. This law is pretty vague, but it has effectively prevented federal funding for firearms research. This means that even though I love finding good data and putting it together in a way that you can apply to your child in your situation, I've had a hard time figuring out the numbers here. I promise to give you the best information that I have available. So when it comes to the best data on how to prevent injuries from firearms in children, we definitely don't have all the information that we need yet. For the last 20 years, since we haven't been able to have federally funded research, most of the studies that have been done were private and small. The CDC, or Center for Disease Control, is able to track the deaths 
And this is the information that we have about those 22,000 children who were killed between the years 2006 and 2016. When they break down the deaths, it's about 63% homicide, 31% suicide, 5% accidental, and the rest were indeterminate. When I look at this slide as a mom, I kind of feel paralyzed. I don't have a good breakdown on these homicides about who's doing what and why. There isn't much that I can do about school shootings. And if somebody wants to shoot my children, there probably isn't very much that I can do to protect them. I do know that school shootings and mass shootings account for a very small percentage of the gun-related deaths in the United States. Like I mentioned in the intro, there are about 393 million guns in the United States that are privately owned or owned by civilians. There are about 320 million people. So the parents I mentioned that think their child won't encounter a gun because they don't own one are wrong. Chances are at some point in your child's life, he or she will come in contact with a gun. That doesn't mean that every home has a gun. There are a few homes that own lots of guns and some homes where there aren't any guns. But based on the data, about 43% of the households in America have at least one firearm in it. And about 33% of the homes that have a child also have a firearm. The question is, what's gonna happen when your child encounters that gun? Have you talked to your child about safety? Have you looked into the resources that are out there? I spent some time on YouTube and there aren't a lot of resources out there for kids. A lot of people have told me that they watched the Eddie the Eagle video on gun safety, which is produced by the NRA. There are a few versions. My favorite is the 1994 version with Jason Priestley in it. But my kids like the newer, more updated version that's a fancier cartoon and some pretty good songs in it. I have caught all four of my kids singing the song here and there to themselves. It's actually pretty catchy. In the last few months, I can't tell you how many times they've all watched it. Now, my kids are young, they're two, three, five, and six. I wouldn't say that any of them have below average intelligence, but that video is about eight minutes long and they have watched it over and over and over. One day, after they'd watched it a few times in a row, I decided to test them. I got a fake gun and I left it on our dining room table. I told the kids to go sit down for a special treat and while I was getting the ice cream ready, they noticed the gun on the table. I am sad to say that three out of four of my kids reached for the gun and touched it immediately. They literally were just singing the song, stop, don't touch, run away, tell a grown up. And they immediately reached out and grabbed that gun instead of stopping, not touching, running away and telling a grown up. Now they knew that video inside and out. They discussed Eddie, Gary and Fiona like they're part of the Paw Patrol. They knew every word to that song and even could sing it in Spanish. But when it came to the application of what it meant, they had no idea. So I wound up only giving ice cream to my son who didn't touch the gun and the rest of them had to sit there and watch him eat it and think about why they had touched that gun. The three of them sat there wailing and crying as if the world had ended because they didn't get ice cream. But I was hoping that maybe that would drive the lesson home for them a little bit better. Now, in terms of other resources, there is a McGruff video there, I think from the late 80s. And even though it's completely outdated, I actually did think the content was pretty good. I think it gives kids a better idea about the possible consequences of what could happen if they play with a gun or if they try to end a dispute with a gun. So if that video could get updated, I think it would actually be a really good resource for kids. I went through a lot. I spent a lot of time searching and really there were a few others that were made in the late 80s, early 90s, but I haven't found anything that was made in the last 20 years besides the Eddie the Eagle video that was relevant. If you guys know of anything, please post it in the comments. I would love to check it out. So if you feel like your kids learned everything they need to know from Eddie the Eagle, I would really like it if you would test them out, either get a toy gun or talk to them, ask them some questions, see what they learned, determine if it actually was effective. Also, I would recommend questioning your children about what they would do in different situations. Give them specific names of their friends, ask them what they would do if that child brought a gun to school, or if they showed your child a gun while they were playing. Make it real, and then you can come up with some strategies to help them with different situations. Now, if you or your child came in contact with a gun, would you know what to do? The day after Halloween, I was walking around the neighborhood with my three kids, and we were kind of going across this grassy field, and my three-year-old jumped out of the stroller and reached down in the grass and picked something up and handed it to me and said, look, mommy, I found a gun. He had a bright orange toy gun in his hands and was really proud of himself for finding it in the grass. Clearly, the stop, don't touch, run away, tell a grown up was just not getting through to him. It was the day after Halloween and so somebody had probably just lost a piece of their costume and dropped the gun in the grass and it was obviously fake, but it made me think about what I would have done if it had been a real gun. When I mentioned it to my instructor at the shooting range later that day, he said it's actually a scenario that happens pretty frequently. 
He used to be a law enforcement officer and he said a lot of times there'll be some guys sitting in a park up to no good. They see a police officer approaching so they take their gun, throw it in a bag, throw it under a bench or into a bush and then the next day a kid walking to school will pass through and just happen to find it out of curiosity and who knows what's going to happen when they pick up that gun. If my son had found a real gun, would I know what to do? Would I be able to get it away from him without hurting him or myself? It was one of the skills I wanted to learn when I took my class. When it comes to gun safety, the first step is understanding the basic anatomy of a gun. There are many types of firearms out there, but for today's purposes, we're going to discuss handguns. Handguns account for the great majority of firearm deaths in the United States. Handguns are relatively cheap, averaging about $200 a piece. Now, according to federal law, you must be 21 years old to purchase a handgun from a licensed dealer, but you only have to be 18 if you're going to do a purchase from an unlicensed dealer. It still means that if anybody's under 18 and they have a handgun, it's not one that they could legally own. So let's take a look at a handgun. The basic anatomy includes the trigger, obviously. Even my two-year-old knows if you squeeze this, you make shooting noises come out of your mouth. Then you have the barrel, which is where the bullet exits the chamber. Down here is the magazine, which is where the ammunition goes. And up here along this part is the chamber. It's really important to be aware that the magazine may be empty, but there could still be a bullet in the chamber. Unless you open the slide and look yourself to see that it's clear, always assume there's a bullet in the chamber. There have been a lot of accidental shootings because someone thought that the gun was unloaded and forgot that there was a bullet in the chamber and they accidentally shot somebody. Modern guns, meaning those that were created after 1960 or so, generally will have a safety and the gun won't fire unless the safety is deactivated. So let's talk a little bit about what I learned in my class. My instructor was happy for me to tape him, but didn't want his face in the video. But he wanted me to be very clear on the big four cardinal rules of gun safety. These are, number one, treat every weapon as if it's loaded. Number two, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. Number three, never point a weapon at anything you're not willing to destroy. Be that yourself, a pet, a television, a child, and know what your target is and what lies beyond that target. These rules are for anyone who plans on handling a weapon. I have seen a number of shootings that were from a responsible gun owner who was cleaning his weapon and accidentally shot a child. He obviously wasn't following any of these rules, but if you're gonna handle a gun, these four rules are a must. Now, what about storing a gun? There's actually a lot of debate about this. Why? Because some people feel that if you follow the recommendation to store your gun and your ammunition separately and locked, then you won't be able to get it in time if there's a home invasion. There are countless stories of children accessing a gun that was stored in a laundry basket or up on a bookshelf or under the bed. My husband's father kept a gun in the attic when they were kids. My husband and his little brothers told one of their friends about it when they were kids, and he decided that he was gonna try to find that gun. Thank goodness my father-in-law caught him before anybody got hurt. But so many stories have ended in tragedy with that type of scenario. If it's not in a locked and secure safe, it's just sitting there waiting for your child to find it and for tragedy to happen. I don't know about you, but my kids are like honey badgers. They can find and open childproof caps that are on shelves nine feet above the ground. I had to put a combination lock on my pantry and they were able to figure that out and get candy sprinkles out and pour them all over the couch today. They break through my childproof locks under the sink and are able to squirt out Windex and dish soap and all kinds of stuff and make huge messes in my kitchen. You may think that your child doesn't know where your gun is or how to access it, but think about yourself as a kid. Think about all the things that you did that you didn't think your parents knew about and think again about whether or not your child can access that gun. One of the things that my instructor told me is that it depends on the purpose of the weapon. If you have a hunting rifle, you definitely want to store it locked and separate from the ammunition. Leaving the ammunition in a gun that can be exposed to moisture can actually cause damage to your weapon and may render it useless. So if it's something that's not going to be used frequently, you definitely want to keep them stored and locked separately. Now for the purposes of home defense, there are bedside safes that can be unlocked very quickly. Sometimes they use fingerprint recognition or other technologies that will allow you quick access to your weapon, but can still keep your children safe. Investing in something like that may be the most important investment you make. Why do I say this? Well, about one in three handguns in the United States is actually stored loaded and unlocked. Most children actually know where their parents keep their guns. More than 75% of first and second grade students surveyed knew where their parents' guns were, and 36% of those kids admitted that they had handled those guns. Their parents all reported that they had not handled the guns, so either the parents were lying on the survey or they weren't aware that their children had been touching the guns. Even within households, people may not agree or know where and how their weapons are being stored. 
One study showed that the men in the home who are more likely to be the owner of the gun report that the gun is stored unlocked and loaded, while the women in the same home will report that the gun is actually stored locked and unloaded. So remember that out of all the homes in America with children, one in three will have a gun. And according to the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia Research Institute, about 1.7 million children live in homes where there is a firearm that is loaded and unlocked. Now, accidental deaths were only a small percentage of all those firearm deaths that we talked about earlier. But even though it's a small percentage, the U.S. General Accounting Office estimates that many of those deaths could have been prevented if there had been a childproof safety lock or a loading indicator on the gun. Now moving over, remember that about 31% of those deaths were due to suicides with firearms. That means that about 700 kids kill themselves every year using a firearm. About 80% of those kids got the gun from their own home or from a friend or family member. Those kids were able to easily access a gun and use it to end their own lives. When it comes to homicides, which was the biggest column there, I honestly don't have a great prevention strategy for you. While many homicides often involve domestic violence or simply being in the wrong place at the wrong time, my best bet for you would still be to know who your child's interacting with, who has access to guns, to do your best to keep yourself and your child out of bad situations. One of the things I found in the comments on the surveys I did about guns was that many people knew someone who had gotten a hold of a gun who shouldn't have and accidentally shot themselves or somebody else, or that they were able to use it to commit suicide. One realtor even mentioned that she had been showing a house, which was a scheduled showing, and she walked in with a family with children. The children walked right over to the kitchen table, and there was a loaded gun sitting on the table. She was shocked because it was the home of a law enforcement officer. My instructor told me that people generally start out very cautious and respectful of their firearms, but as they get more comfortable, they get careless and lazy with the safety precautions. And that's when it gets dangerous. You never know when you will encounter a gun or how, and the same is true for your children. Based on where we live, I operate on the assumption that just about everyone we encounter owns a gun or more than one gun. When my kids have been invited over for playdates, I actually have asked families if my son would possibly encounter a gun in their home. I've never had a family be upset about the question, but I've talked to other moms who said they wouldn't feel comfortable asking that question. I decided to go ahead and do some quick non-scientific research, and so what I did was create some polls on Facebook in the communities in which I live. I feel like most of the things I post just get ignored or lost in the shuffle, so I was shocked when I asked this question and I got over a thousand responses within the first two days. So 86% of people said they felt positively about the question. 11% of people said they were neutral or they didn't care, and less than 2% of people said they'd be offended by the question. The comments ranged from people saying they really appreciated the post and appreciated the question because of personal experience they had with loss, but some people did say they felt like it was a violation of privacy to be asked. One person said that a, a parent had actually insisted on coming inside the house and seeing the gun safe before he let his child play there. Even though less than 2% of people said they would be offended, it got me to thinking that there must be a right way to ask this question. So I came up with a couple ideas on phrasing. Here you go. Oh, hey Kelly. Hey Lily, how's it going? Great, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, the boys had such a good time playing last week that Kyler wanted to know if Aiden could come over for a play date next Thursday. Sure, I can send a note to school. Just a couple of questions though. Do you guys have any pets or a pool or anything I should be aware of? Oh, nope, nope. And I guess, you know, I should know, does Aiden have any food allergies or anything we need to be concerned about? No, he doesn't have any food allergies. Thanks for asking. Just one more question. How do you feel about the right to bear arms? Um... Do you like guns? Weapons? Is your son gonna shoot my precious baby while you're changing a load of laundry? Okay, crazy lady. You know, I forgot we had plans next Thursday. I think we're gonna have to, to cancel. Please tell me you don't have any guns in your house. But if you do, I need to know exactly where they are, how they're stored. I want you to show me your gun safe, teach me the combination, and show me everything about them. What, is she casing the joint? Is she gonna rob me or something? One more question. Is your home a gun safe home, meaning that if you do have guns in the home, they're stored safely and inaccessible to children? Ooh, I like this one. If I say yes, she doesn't know if we have guns. She just knows if we do, they're safe and inaccessible. I get to keep my privacy and she gets to know her son is safe. Yes, we are a gun safe home. You don't have anything to worry about. Okay, great. We'll see you on Thursday. So yeah, I like the idea of asking about the gun safe home. Some people don't want you to know that they don't have guns. They feel like it makes them more vulnerable to attack 
And if they do have guns, they probably don't want you to know the specifics on where and how they store them. Phrasing the question like this allows the inviting family to keep their privacy. And since the research shows that one third of homes have loaded, unlocked guns, asking this question may be the thing that makes those families think about how they're storing their guns and what the possible effects could be on their own children. So where does this leave us? If you have a gun in your home, it needs to be locked away with the ammunition stored separately. Check out some of the more advanced safes that allow you to access the gun quickly if needed, but will still keep your child safe in your home. Use some of the tools available online. Be Smart is a great program and you can check that out. I'll put the link in the comments. Come up with real life scenarios. Talk about peer pressure and bullying. Ask your kid what could go wrong if someone brought a gun to school or tried to use a gun to end a dispute. Have open and honest conversations with your children about what could happen and why. Ask what they would do if their best friend brought a gun to school or test your kids by leaving a toy gun out and see what they do. I also recommend taking a firearm safety class. It's not a bad life skill to have. If my three-year-old had grabbed a real gun that day, would I panic or would I be able to get that gun safely away from him and make sure that it was unloaded? I by no means consider myself a weapons expert, but I do know how to remove the magazine and clear the chamber to make sure that a gun is unloaded. I also know those four cardinal rules of gun safety. Treat every weapon as if it's loaded. Don't put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Don't point the gun at anything you're not willing to destroy and know what your target is and what lies beyond that target. And here's the best news. That freeze on firearms research has had a little bit of a thaw. After the Parkland shooting, Congress determined that the CDC can probe into the causes of gun violence. There is a Dr. Cunningham who received a $4.9 million grant from the NIH to start a program called Firearm Safety Among Children and Teens. This consortium wants to be clear that they are not anti-gun or trying to limit the Second Amendment. They feel that gun ownership is an important part of the cultural fabric of U.S. society. What they are trying to do is reduce pediatric gun deaths. They are using this money to explore why and how children die from gun violence and what can be done to prevent it. They will be working on these questions for the next five years. So hopefully it won't be too long before I can give you guys another video that has a little more information about what you can do to keep your children safe. Until then, I recommend safe storage of firearms, open and honest conversations with your children, and open conversations with other adults about whether or not their home is gun safe before you send your children over there. Are these questions you've asked other families? Have you talked about it with your own kids? I'd love to hear from you. Please comment below. Let me know what you've done in the past if you know of any great resources that help teach kids about gun safety. And just let me know what you think in the comments. Also, don't forget to hit that little red subscribe button below so you don't miss out on any new content. This is Dr. Lilly with My Pocket Pediatrician. Thanks for stopping by.